33rd honor and shame from no condition rise act well our part and there all the honor lies we are generally proud of high birth and position and ashamed if we are born poor or humble but there is no point in this we can be rightly proud or ashamed of only our own doing of things for which we are responsible and over which we have control birth is a matter of chance we have absolutely no hand in it so to be proud or ashamed of our birth and position is as unreasonable as to be proud or ashamed of the doings of stranger moreover poverty is no crime nor high position or riches a virtue all have their respective duties in life and true honor or shame rests on whether we discharge these duties properly or neglect them a poor and humble man is worthy of respect if he does his duties sincerely and lives by honest means a rich and noble man on the other hand converses himself with shame if he lives a life of vice and abuses his wealth or power 34 he prayeth best who loveth best all things both great and small we pray to god for his love and favor but people think that to pray properly is a difficult thing that it requires strict observance of certain forms and attendance at a place of worship this however is an entirely wrong idea the best form of prayer is to love one's fellow men god is the creator of everything in the universe so he is the common father of all mankind great and small rich and poor black and white he is therefore most pleased when we love and help one another just as a human father is most happy when there is love among his children so we can all win his blessings by simply loving our fellow men whoever they may be and by helping them as best we can 35 a man without a purpose is like a ship without a rudder a ship without a rudder drifts at the mercy of the wind and waves even if it does not sink it cannot reach the goal similarly a man without a definite aim cannot succeed in life as he cannot fix his mind upon any particular object he simply wastes his time and energy in trying one thing after another in a half-hearted way he soon loses self-confidence and feels quite helpless in the sea of life so it is necessary for every man to have a definite aim in line life and this aim should be fixed upon at an early age after careful consideration of the natural bent and aptitude of a person in his boyhood once this decision is made it should be struck to whatever difficulties may come in the way this will not only enable the person to reach his particular goal but also strengthen his mind and character leading him to success in all walks of life 36 lives of great men all remind us we can make our lives sublime these famous lines stress the influence of noble lives persons who have won greatness do not attain it by sudden flight or as a gift from anybody they become great by sheer merit by the hard fight against the difficulties of life no temptation no sufferings can draw them away from what they felt to be true some even sacrificed their lives in their pursuit of truth christ was offered by satan the kingdom of the earth but he would not be tempted buddha too could not be scared away by mahatma by mar mahatma gandhi netaji subhash chandra deshbandhu chitrandan what suffering and sacrifice they went through in pursuit of their ideals newton frade edison meghnath saha from what an humble state they became world figure in the realm of science by their own exertion the lives of such men are an inspiration to one and all 
they teach us that greatness does not require extraordinary qualities that we too may become great if only we have the strength and firmness to pursue a noble ideal without any care for the sufferings that may come upon us page 671 37 the old older change it yielding place to new time flows on without any stop this is why things are always changing in fact change is the law of nature this is true not only of physical life the conditions in which a man lives as also his thoughts and ideas are changing from age to age thus our mode of living and ideas are different from our grandfathers and those of our grandfathers again were different from their own grandfathers even in the same age the thoughts and ideas of a boy or youth are different from an old man's with the rapid progress of civilization this difference is becoming more and more marked the changes may not be to our liking but as they have been brought about by time forces we cannot stop them we have therefore to accept the new order of things as inevitable and adapt ourselves to it unless we do this we shall feel miserable and make others also miserable this is the reason why there is often a conflict between the old and the new each regarding the other as unreasonable the best course is to retire in time in favor of new men whose ideas are more in keeping with the new forces and developments 38 frail creatures are we all to be the best is but the fewest faults to have to err is human runs a familiar pro proverb indeed it is not possible for anybody to be completely free from all faults even the greatest men the world has ever produced were not without some defect or other only the failings were of a negligible nature almost nothing in comparison with their virtue in fact it is only god who is perfect we should bear this in mind in our judgment of others as well as of ourselves we should not despair if we fail to avoid all faults our aim should be to be as free from faults as possible if we succeed in this it will be enough for us and we rightfully enjoy the love and respect of all our judgment of others should also be guided by this truth a man may have some faults of a minor nature but if he is generally good we should ignore these faults and respect him for his virtues 39th peace hath her victories no less renowned than war we generally honor a victorious general the more countries we conquer the greater the fame he wins thus the names of alexander chungiz khan napoleon have become immortal because of their great victories but there were nobler heroes of a different kind while the former won their victories through blood and destruction the latter won them by peaceful means just think of the difficulties that explorer like columbus and livingston and scientists like galileo as jenner edison had to overcome before they could make their discoveries great religious teachers like buddha and jesus and poets like kalidas shakespeare and ravindranath have conquered the hearts of men all over the world the empires built up by the generals melted away almost with their death but these heroes of peace will continue to rule the minds of men for all time to come so their achievements are more glorious than those of the warrior page 672 40th i slept and dreamt that life was beauty i woke and found that life was duty most boys and girls enjoy almost a sheltered existence they live under the care of their guardians who provide them with every comfort possible within their means so they take a very rosy view of life their natural cheerfulness of spirits help to strengthen this attitude but when they enter the world as grown up men they realize that all their previous ideas of life all the bright and beautiful pictures they 
drew up of it in youth were mere dreams they find that as social beings they have many duties in life duties to their families their societies and to their countries and they realize also that they have to be very hard working and selfless if they are to discharge these duties properly no doubt to have a cheerful outlook and hope for the best are good qualities but they should not be allowed to blind the youth to the realities of life the things he dreams of will not fall to him from the skies he will have to realize them by his own exertion by hard toil this is why it is necessary for everybody to prepare himself thoroughly in his early years for the tasks that he will have to perform in life 41 cities and thrones and powers stand in time's eye almost as long as flowers which daily die all earthly power and glory are in vain in fact in comparison with eternal time they are as short lived as flowers which bloom and fade away only in the course of a single day but new powers and cities are constantly growing out of the ruins of the destroyed ones like fresh flowers daily blooming forth out of those that have withered away thus the cities of mohenjodaro indraprastha babylon the empires of greece and rome are all dead and gone and new prosperous cities and powers have sprung up in their stead we should not therefore be proud of prosperity but should accept it with humility and make the best use of it as long as it lasts 42 cowards die many times before their deaths the valiant never tastes of death but once everybody knows that death is the inevitable lot of all however much uh, one may try to avoid it and that it can come only once in life still fear of death is the greatest fear of man many are so much afraid of it that they dare not face risks of any kind they allow wrongs to continue and even work against their conscience for fear of harm to their lives extremely miserable is the life of such cowards they become the slaves of their fear and in trying to avoid the pangs of death they only suffer from them repeatedly they are persons however who are not afraid of death they bravely face risks for a noble cause even at the cost of their lives they feel that since there is no escape from death it is better to die nobly than to live basely they are the heroes of the life pride and glory of mankind 43rd goodness is better than greatness a great man may not be good he may be selfish cruel or even dishonest a good man may love his neighbor as himself he may do his little nameless acts of kindness and of love to others but he may not be much in public eye he may be known only to a small circle of friends history tells us that many persons have waded through blood to the throne many ambitious persons have ascended to power and position by dishonest means lord byron was a great poet of england but he was a rake nadir shah and temur lang were mighty conquerors but they killed thousands of innocent men in cold blood these great men of history are remembered even now but never with affection but jesus christ and lord buddha preached the religion of love and caused a mighty change in the thoughts of men they conquered no country and won no gold yet through the ages they have been worshiped as great benefactors of men sometimes a natural calamity overtakes men women and children by thousands bands of selfless social workers go out to help the stricken humanity very few know their names but these kind hearted people are better men than many persons eminent in different walks of life thus there is a great difference between a good man and a great man 
goodness reveals the heart the moral excellence of man greatness shows the head the intellectual equipments of man or material power hence shakespeare says he is not great who is not greatly good page 673 44 the hand that rocks the cradle rules the world page 673 the proverb stresses the influence of a mother on the future of a child and through him on the world at large childhood and boyhood are the most important period of a man's life the man is like soft clay during this time and can be easily shaped into any form one pleases therefore the training that a person receives then takes firm root in him and decides his future and this training he gets mostly from his mother because he lives under her constant care during these periods this is why the mother exercises the greatest influence in the formation of her son's character and in shaping his destiny if the mother is good the child also will grow up a good man but if the mother is bad he is most likely to grow up wicked too napoleon said that it was his mother's inspiration that led him to greatness the mother of ishwar chandra was a living example of simplicity and kindness and it was this that made the son also so great in these qualities therefore every mother should be very particular about her son's training she should never set any bad example before him instead she should always inspire him with noble ideas so that they may take firm root in him and lead him to greatness 45 a hungry man is an angry man food is the fundamental need of every human being nobody can live without it survival without food is simply impossible day and night a man puts on hard labor in the pursuit of it it is the chief occupation of every man for the satisfaction of his hunger he would stoop to any act of degradation all ethics moral values philosophies etc would have no meaning to a man who is hungry whose stomach is empty it is but natural that a hungry man is always angry and would revolt at the slightest provocation no amount of love sympathy or flattery can win him over no advice sermon or arguments will pacify him he would turn against all sorts of establishments rightly or wrongly political or social he may even try to destroy the very system we live in it is therefore absolutely correct to say that a hungry man is an angry man it is the primary duty of every government to provide everybody with food and to keep harmony and peace in the society 46 experience is the best teacher we learn from two distinct methods one the method of gaining knowledge by doing something on our own the other is the method of receiving instructions from someone else the knowledge acquired by the first method is much more lasting then the same gained through instructions for learning through instructions we are to strain our nerves and brains to remember and recapitulate the lessons but the lessons learnt through self experience are more easily grasped they are imprinted on our mental plate we can easily fall back upon it as and when necessary by this method we can store our lesson the knowledge gained through experience is thorough accurate and complete self experience cannot be substituted by any amount of classroom demonstration or lectures by the best teachers the first hand and intimate knowledge of any subject can be acquired only if the students involve themselves in the entire process of a particular job thus it is rightly said that experience is the best teacher page 674 47 uneasy lies the head that wears a crown almost every one of us envy the people at the top those who are at the helm of power seemingly it appears to most of us that those people are very happy carefree earn a lot of money and enjoy the privileges because of their wealth and power we envy them at each and every step and presume that they have little to worry about 
while some of the assessments may be true to some extent the last one is absolutely wrong we can easily imagine the burden they carry under their crown history tells us how powerful emperors kings and even the most ruthless dictators spent anxious and tense period and sleepless nights in various phases of their careers heads of states democratic or totalitarian have to take precautionary measures to prevent possible attempts against their lives thus the wearer of a crown that is who wields power lives in a constant fear of assassin's bullet or dagger he can never live a carefree life many other factors also ag- aggravate their uneasiness as they sit in the citadel of power they have great responsibility to the society at large and especially to the people they rule they are constantly worried about these as they know that unless they can perform their duties properly they will have to face strong criticism and may even be removed from their exalted position thus the fear of losing their posts constantly haunts them so if maybe it may be said that the proverb uneasy lies the head that wears a cro- crown is quite apt 48 the past is golden the present lint men generally regard the past as better than the present in prose or verse great writers have placed the golden age in the past there are some reasons behind this habit of mind as men grow up they cast a longing lingering look behind they love to cherish the sweet memories of their early days as regard the far regards the far off past our knowledge is limited details of hardships and sufferings are not always recorded in history and are therefore unknown to us again nobody quarrels with the dead the past is dead and gone our personal emotions and prejudices are rarely stirred by an event distant in time moreover things viewed from a distance appear charming the ugly sport in them are hidden from our sight sports that is why men in general are inclined to look upon the past as golden contrasted with the past the present sounds us on all sides we actually experience the toil sweat and tears of our age we like something while we dislike some other things we feel chilled when things go against us we find that many try but few succeed we live in the present are and are affected by the happening of today so the dark side of the present age attracts our notice naturally we think that the present is laden l e a d e n a bad time laden means a bad time 49 morning shows the day if we go through the lives of all the great men we are almost sure to find out one thing in common in mo- them most of them in childhood showed glimpses of their potentialities which unfolded later in their life let us analyze one particular case vivekananda the most talked about saint of our era he is a classic example of this proverb we can we have heard many stories about his early childhood courage his oratory power his power of concentration his fearlessness and above all his inquisitiveness to know the truth there are also many stories about his reformist outlook even in his early life page 675 his inquisitiveness led him to ramakrishna the greatest of all saints encouraged by this great master he was determined to know india properly first and then to spread the voice of his master later he went round the world defying impregnable barriers he talked about india and hinduism fearlessly he took the world by storm his love for mankind knew no bounds not being satisfied with preaching only he founded ramakrishna mission his love for mankind irrespective of their color creed or religion the broad outlook of a monk and the potentiality to be a true reformer all this early promises revealed fully later in his life like a full bloom lotus 
he became one of the greatest spiritual reformers of india thus as far as he or ramakrishna and many other are concerned we may say that there is a truth in the proverb morning shows the day but as a child neither mahatma gandhi nor einstein showed much promise einstein was unpopular with his teachers and gandhi ji was like any other boy in many ways who could have predicted that they would turn out to be what they turned out even in case of ravindranath we know that he did not fare well in school nevertheless it was in their early days that they showed their metal page 675 50 if winter comes can spring be far behind change is the law of nature we have six seasons winter gives place to spring which is followed by summer this is an internal eternal cycle laid down by mother nature winter is the season of extreme cold chill and snow the leaves fall off from the trees and the nature looks bare this season is not at all comfortable to the poor people but it must appear whether we like it or not with the onset of spring trees put forth new leaves and beautiful flowers bloom all around cold wind gives place to gentle breeze mother nature starts smiling again darkness gives place to light in the life of man also there is a cycle it is but natural that he should feel gloomy when adversity overtakes him with the onset of spring trees put forth new leaves and beautiful flowers bloom all around cold give, wind gives place to gentle breeze mother nature starts smiling again darkness giving birth das, darkness giving place to light in the life of man also there is a cycle it is but natural that he should feel gloomy when adversity overtakes him he may lose all hope and become a pessimist it is at this crucial junction that he should draw courage from mother nature he should realize that like dark clouds chilly winds and wintry weather they can cast shadow on one's life but they are all temporary they will have to disappear it is the law of nature misfortune and difficulties may overcome us but we must not forget that they are all temporary fortune and happiness are bound to follow them let us all face our difficulties courageously for the brighter period ahead 51 the heights by great men reached and kept were not attained by sudden flight but they while their companions slept were toiling upward in the night everybody desires greatness but very few attain it from this people generally think that greatness requires luck or the possession of extraordinary qualities but that is a wrong idea the secret of greatness is nothing but hard toil infinite capacity for taking pains most people fail to attain greatness simply because they waste their time and opportunities in idleness or do not have the firmness to push on with their objects the great on the other hand never waste their time or allow their opportunities to slip their progress might have been slow but they did not lose heart and give up even failure did not damp their spirits they worked on firmly and steadily in the face of all obstacles and difficulties until they reached the end in fact everybody can become great if he works on in this way with firm determination and patient perseverance